okay so um so having looked at uh, linear shifting variance of system and how to characterize system right we talked about uh, convolution being an important uh, operator right so let's so this is fine we are talking about f of x and g of x which are all in the spatial domain so we could use convolution property right and uh, we uh, talked about how the system transfer function concept right system uh, impulse response point spread function how do you use the system impulse response function that connects uh, your input and output uh, through the convolution operator so clearly that is fine this is very intuitive this is straight forward but uh, uh, there are other ways through which other operators through which we could still analyze the system properties so if you looked at uh, your 1d if you recall your 1d uh, systems analysis you will notice that we used to call their time domain analysis or you know time series so you have uh, signal usually the independent variable being time right you will analyze time domain or you could actually capture the signal in the frequency domain and so there is a important operator that comes in which important transform that comes in which is fourier transform so now that we have seen how convolution could be used uh, right that connects the system function and uh, your input and output let's see how we can make use of fourier transform or the other domain or other equivalent domain to analyze a system so this is going to be again a very uh, quick review okay so you will appreciate that all of the uh, like we saw for the systems review the fourier transform is going to be a direct extension from 1d to 2d of course there are couple of uh, uh, aspects that uh, you know may look initially little complicated but uh, once you understand how to read that right read the equation in english make it intuitive i think uh, it's not going to be that complicated so you need to uh, so you have to take it at the level of a review material okay so let's start with <coughs> fourier transform right fourier transform a review so what do we mean by that oh so there is a f of x comma y which is what we have been dealing with so far right f of x comma y is your spatial variable in two dimensions that is what we have been uh, working upon so now this is called as your forward direction this is your fourier transform and this is your inverse fourier transform so if you really have a careful look at what it is of course u and v are the spatial frequencies so if you recall at this point of time before we jump in and interpret just to just for you to feel convinced that this is a direct extension like i said last uh, concept as well you can do x of x comma y was your t right x comma y was your t so your u and v are your spatial frequencies which was say f f or 2 pi f would be your omega right so whichever way you are familiar with you can you can do that but if you substitute this you will quickly realize that f of t e power minus j 2 pi f t dt only one variable right and there will be one integral your right your lhs would be f of j omega or whatever frequency denotation you do so it's a straight forward extension only thing is the time variable instead of time variable now we are going to deal with spatial variables so therefore we already interpreted visualized these frequencies right go back to the example where we talked about lines uh, sorry we we talked about the pattern right it was vertical uh uh parallel bars right black and white alternate and then that was at an angle so we visualized frequencies so now what here you see is how do i break the signal f of x comma y or decompose the signal f of x comma y into its frequency component so essentially we did this in time in in spatial domain by using the 
spatial impulse response right the direct delta function your your uh, uh, point impulse response right we talked about f of x y you can pick point so essentially you can see the arbitrary function f of x y in terms of your impulse response so instead of that now you are breaking or you are decomposing your f of x comma y into component co complex exponentials so that is what is happening here so so you are breaking f of x comma y in terms of complex exponentials again what is this complex exponential e power so when we covered the important signals we co covered complex exponentials and we wrote that in terms of sin and cosine so essentially what you have is you can see this as sin and cosine with some frequency which is your spatial frequencies u and v so you have writing or decomposing this f of x comma y and seeing how much of frequency content is there so your f of u comma v so how many frequency content this f of x y is composed of okay so naturally this is your forward and similarly if you are given all the frequency composition then you could get back to your spatial domain f of x comma y okay so a very simple concept wise direct extension of your time domain for frequency domain to the time in one di one dimension right time domain to frequency domain frequency domain to time domain forward fourier transform inverse fourier transform same thing of course if you do that then you are representing your uh, signal f of x comma y in terms of its constituent frequencies and therefore we can write the uh, 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 you have to have the integrals right you have to be able to evaluate this and when is it sufficient right you have to have a sufficient condition when you can compute the integral so that you can cal calculate your fourier transforms and that is happening if f of x comma y is continuous or if it is discontinuous it is only finite discontinuities and in any case it has to be absolutely integrable only in this case you can calculate the fourier transform it turns out that most of the uh, uh, transforms that will be applying for th this this uh, imaging system so signals that are participating in in this uh, uh, undergoing this in the medical imaging systems it is reasonably good approximation so it it satisfies this so most of the time you won't have a problem calculating the fourier transforms rather it is the sufficient condition will be met okay so it is very powerful as uh, uh, no i cannot reiterate it enough you if you if you have done any uh, signal processing with one dimension you know the powerfulness of your fourier transform so same thing extends here also in fact this uh, 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 will not jump the gun ahead of its time but then you will notice that understanding of the fourier transform is very important or you have to be very comfortable because in one of the modalities that we will cover the signal you will be acquiring can be thought of as directly estimating the frequency response so let's uh, uh, you know frequency domain so we'll wait until that so get a feel for what it is so if that is the case right if you if you break the signal f of x y f of x comma y into its frequency components so you could calculate what is this called as your right magnitude magnitude response or your uh magnitude spectra right this is your real part this is your imaginary part right so this is your magnitude spectra if you do a square of this then it becomes power spectra so here we are just doing magnitude spectra and this is your phase so you can decompose into magnitude spectra and phase spectra notice you have to need both of them to uniquely identify f of x comma y clear so let us now uh, use this to run through some uh, basic property because we see this this transform is very powerful so let's see what are the good uh, properties of this fourier transform that will make us play with this little more comfortably okay so before we jump into that just one slide to give you the big picture of what do we mean by frequency components and how to visualize right so what do you see in the first row 
it says signal just because we have covered signals right so what is this signal oh it has two dimensions x and y remember we are not plotting this we are visualizing this two dimensional signal as an image okay so that is a concept that we brushed then you can see a head right i mean but then which direction of the head is this side views or sagittal so right so you should be able to appreciate the view you should be appreciate what this two dimensional signal representation is it's in the form of a image pixel each of the pixel value has a, a different shade right black to white depending on the value that it contains so that is your image so now what do you see here this is going to be your magnitude spectrum what does that mean that means i have taken the fourier transform i have decomposed this 2d signal f of x comma y into capital f of u comma v so we are obtaining so this is your u and v the two directions the frequency in uh, uh, along x axis and frequency along y axis clearly you see one thing i mean for most of you if you look at this you cannot really make out anything i mean this you can really spatial domain this looks like a head and we know what it is right so there is this is head inside there is some brain part and this is nose this is mouth i mean we can uh, you know we know what it is that is here it's very difficult to interpret however there are some salient points salient uh, aspects about this that we can still intuitively interpret okay that is the goal of this slide right here so first things first okay so this is the signal and it contains all of these frequencies meaning all of these frequencies are contributing to getting this image right so what is this frequency oh we know we saw from the visualization remember go back to the the review of signals when we talked about how to visualize the frequencies what do we mean by spatial frequency u and v right we had the parallel bars that are running black and white horizontal uh, vertical pattern and then that was at an angle so we calculated u frequency and v frequency what was that oh what do we mean by u frequency that means uh, how, do, how do you have a fluctuation what is a fluctuation or oscillation in this case uh, black to white or white to black or you know the the pattern so that is your variation the intensity variation along your x axis likewise your intensity variation along y axis intensity as in the cyclic variation right black to white to white to black remember how we plotted that so essentially number of cycles of that that is there is going in the y direction is going to be your v frequency so if you look at it clearly you can see here if i draw there is going to be white black so there is a y component there is a frequency in the y component there is a frequency in the y x component right u direction so wherever you see vertical lines right or feature here that means it is going to have variation in the horizontal direction or the x direction so there's going to be u frequency so clearly you can see that means in this space you have several frequencies okay so it need not be just u and v that is perpendicular it can be at any angle so here for example you, you i mean this goes from horizontal to vertical so you have see so many angles so they it's all perpendicular there so the frequencies along there is some frequency in the u direction some frequency in the v direction right so some other point u comma v so remember when we we also saw an example of uh, u and v both being non zero right so that means you have both the frequency so that's how this plane is populated so how do we appreciate okay even though here it's very difficult to appreciate any pattern we can still observe few things one is there is a bright spot at the center right and uh, probably it gets less denser as you go outwards that is higher frequency so this is your frequency axis center is 0 comma 0 0 comma 0 is the center so this is your u this is your v right so there is positive frequency negative frequency up and down 0 comma 0 is at the center so clearly what you see is if for example 
we remove we remove right frequencies that are above a certain frequency so this is blackened out right so that means uh, the high frequencies are removed when you remove the high frequency in the frequency content how does the image look wow it looks blurred right more physically if you want to appreciate the edges are now looking less prominent so for example you still see the shape of the head you still see the brain right you see the structures but then it is not sharp right look at here and look at here it's not sharp the transitions are not as sharp as in this image so that means there is no rapid transition rapid transitions are minimized what do we mean by rapid transitions that means the fluctuation from white to black to black to white right that is becoming less prominent that means it is slowing down that means the high frequency if it is fast, transitions are fast that means that is high frequency so if you remove the high frequency the transitions become less visible to extreme cases if you really cut down right then you notice still you are able to see that this is a head this is a nose more or less you are able to see the structure but it looks more or less homogeneously white you really do not see much transitions you have some transitions which are captured but predominantly what this says is all of the energy is if it is contained only at the center that is that is your dc value or zero frequency if there is zero frequency what is the meaning there is no oscillation meaning there is no change there is no fluctuation in the intensity that means if this is only one value right if there is high contribution from uh, zero value 0 comma 0 there is no frequency this should look flat this should look same value throughout which is pretty much what it is of course you have some frequency still left and therefore you see subtle so if i go ahead and you know filter it further and use only this frequency this will become like a disk right white disk that means you just have one black to white transition another black white to black transition within this whole space whatever this length scale is so you have one fluctuation per length right you see or nose fluctuation per length will become zero value right that will be your only one point so if you have only one point one frequency at zero comma zero which is your dc frequency and that contains all the energy that means your spatial is going to be flat equal to one everywhere right that is what uh, you expect so the main point that i would like for you to appreciate here is so looking at this image physical dimensions the length dimensions in the spatial domain you can now perhaps eyeball and appreciate what do we mean by spatial frequencies okay in time domain maybe we are trained you could look at a signal form the wave form and start to count how many you know cycles are there and you can guess the frequency so here as well you should be able to visualize what it is even though the 2d spectrum is going to be not really having much pattern right it's going to be you know uh, have a dc and then high frequency content the pattern will be visible here okay uh, good so we now know what is frequency you know the fourier transform and uh, how do you get from spatial domain to frequency domain and uh, now let's move on to look at some of the properties okay so the way we would like to do is since this is a review i would just list this out that will give you few seconds to perhaps recall connect with what the property name would be all of these that we are going to cover should not be uh, the first time that you are looking at this or uh, uh, hearing about this if you, if that is the case then i sincerely recommend you go back and review right read one dimension first and then look at this okay so what is this in fact some of this that we will cover we just reviewed for systems okay anyway so what is this this says this is the fourier transform operator so this is your f of a1 
f that is I have a function small f I have a function small g f of x comma y g of x comma y a1 of f of x comma y plus a2 of g of x comma y if I send them through Fourier transform right, if I take the Fourier transform of some of these two signals right weighted by a1 and a2 respectively that is equal to a1 f of u comma v that is your Fourier transform of f of x comma v is f of u comma v Fourier transform of g of x comma y is g of u comma v so does this ring a bell when I give input as weighted sum of two functions the output of that is output of the individual ones through that system with the corresponding sum of respective outputs weighted by the corresponding coefficients what is that linearity okay so this again is going to be very handy so the idea is when we did uh, impulse function time domain we use this linearity property very much right so you will see that that means uh, Fourier transform also obeys this linearity so analysis of a system using uh, the, the equivalent frequency representation of the signal will be uh, very tractable as well so next so if I have similarly if I have f of x comma y the Fourier transform is capital F of u comma y so if I send right if x f of x comma y if I shift the signal so f of x minus x naught y minus y naught which is shifted signal if I shift in spatial domain by x naught and y naught in their respective axis then what do I see what do I get oh if I take the Fourier transform right this is the magnitude so your magnitude of f of f not x not y not just to represent this u comma v is nothing but f of u comma v fine more importantly there is e power minus j 2 pi x not y not that means if I shift the signal the magnitude of the Fourier transform does not change okay the magnitude of the Fourier transform of the shifted signal does not change it is still f of u comma v but what changes it reflects in the phase shift or right your your frequency here right u of it so your exponential so there you have a shift so that is your phase shift remember we talked about magnitude plot and phase magnitude spectra and phase spectra so magnitude does not change so if I shift the signal in spatial domain the magnitude of the Fourier transform remains same only the phase shift so this folds as a phase shift very similar to in one dimension if you do time delay right at least that's that usually we if you do time delay you will have phase shift similar thing right so nothing much to that so these will be very helpful in uh, playing with uh, uh, this thing so this is your translation property so if you translate in space it will have a phase shift magnitude will not change in the Fourier domain okay so then uh, uh, properties of conjugation and conjugate symmetry so if you have a, a, a complex uh, sorry if you have a, a, a if capital F of u comma v right is the frequency uh, Fourier transform of a complex signal uh, f of x comma y for example right then the Fourier transform of f asterisk so this is your complex conjugate this asterisk of u comma v is f complex conjugate of minus u comma minus v so this is your conjugation property likewise if you have f of x comma y is a real valued right and f of u comma v is the Fourier transform of that then you have f of u comma v will be equal to f asterisk complex conjugate of minus u comma minus v so this is your conjugate symmetry 
property. So, all this even function, odd function, right, conjugate, real part, imaginary part, what is the uh, phase is symmetry, magnitude is all this very similar to your 1D equivalent, nothing new here. So, it might help for you to brush that up. Okay, so, so far it is just direct extension of what we know in 1D. This is another thing, right? If you have uh, what is this representation, it basically says the small f is your spatial domain signal, right? So, in the spatial domain, f of x comma y if a and b are the respective uh, values uh, of scaling so f a x f then b y so that is what this a b denotes so if you have f of x comma y and the fourier transform is capital f of u comma y if i now have a input signal which is scaled f a x comma b y right what will be the fourier transform of that fourier transform of that will be f of a comma b u of e equal to c the inverse right so this is your scaling property okay so you can similar to what we covered you could see what happens if a equal to b equal to minus 1 right so it will become f of minus x comma minus y equal to capital f of right Fourier transform will be capital F of minus u comma minus v that is if you if you reverse your x and y your Fourier transform also gets reversed ok. So, this is your scaling property very similar that thing new here ok uh, that is fine this is something that is interesting again now that we are going to two dimensions right in one dimension this is uh, you can probably have only symmetry around the axis right whereas now what do you see here this is my f of x comma y regular f of x comma y i have added a theta here so what does this mean if i have f of x comma y that is my signal f theta of x comma y represents a signal which says it is a rotated version of f of x comma y right so, f of x comma y if it is there your Fourier transform is capital F of u comma v. Now, if I represent f theta of x comma y which represents a signal f of x comma y that is rotated about the origin by theta right f of x cos theta minus y sin theta comma x sin theta plus y cos theta. So, it is making some angle so it is rotating by theta degree then what happens to the Fourier or this frequency spectrum representation of the signal if you rotate in spatial domain what do you think is going to happen in the frequency domain well very interesting very nicely if you rotate it here in this direction in, in your spatial domain your it is equivalent to rotating your frequency domain so if you f of this function right f of rotated version so you have a, 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 a fourier spectra when it is capital f of u comma v when the signal is f of x comma y if you rotate the signal right at angle theta f of x comma y is rotated by theta then the original spectra capital f of u comma y is also rotated by the same amount of theta so, essentially if you do the space, it makes some sense right if you intuitively look at the examples that we covered there was a horizontal pattern black and white stripes were horizontal pattern. If I now, so when we did that what did we say? Oh, we said the frequency is changing only in u direction it is constant in v direction. So, v was equal to 0 and u had some frequency I think 1 or 4 the uh, 1, 2 and 4 is what we covered right. So, imagine instead of vertical line you rotate that what will happen it become a horizontal line. So, now your frequency domain whatever was there in the u will become to v, v will become to u right you are rotating the frequency. So, you will have u equal to 0 right the frequency along y direction if you go turn it right whatever was parallel uh, vertical if you turn it to horizontal now you will have variation only in the y direction 
and it will be same in the x direction. So, your u will become 0, v will have those frequencies. So, it will look like you are shifting or you are turning, rotating the frequency domain. Okay, so, this is called as your rotation property. So, these are all very um, interesting and uh, important because you will encounter, because we talk about two dimension, if it is going to be uh, rotation, right? We talked about without jumping into detail to just appreciate why you might encounter this. We talked about uh, views, different views. Remember, projection, different views. So, you can already start to imagine you will encounter rotation quite frequently. Okay. Is there anything else we want to do here? Last but not the least, very powerful. Right. What does this say? When you do convolution, so it is very similar to your time domain. When you do time domain, con uh, uh, convolution in the time domain, same effect is obtained when you do multiplication of their respective uh, frequency domain, right? In the, in the frequency domain. So, similarly here. So, whatever, if you do convolution, if you do convolution operator in spatial domain, you can get the same effect by doing multiplication or product, taking the product. So, if you have two signals and you convolve, you get an output. So, instead of doing convolution in spatial domain, what I can do is take the Fourier transform of the first signal, take the Fourier transform of the second signal and then multiply them. I will get same effect, right, operation on the signal. So, the net output signal will be the equivalent. So, this is again a very powerful whether you want to implement your algorithms in time domain or uh, here in this case spatial domain or in the frequency domain. So, this back and forth you will you will have to do several times. Okay. So, this is a very interesting property. Likewise, if you have multiplication, right? if you have two signals which are multiplied in spatial domain, then you could take their respective Fourier transforms and do a convolution in the frequency domain you will get the same output signal by these operations. Okay? So, that is something that is very powerful. You will encounter that at least at the time of implementation. When you, when you are implementing certain algorithms, when you are doing these operators, whether do you want to use uh, frequency domain operators or time domain operators, spatial domain operators, which is efficient, which is accurate, all these things you will encounter. Okay. So, just to state another useful one is like I said for systems also, right? If you have uh, F capital F of U comma V as the 2D Fourier transform of signal small f of x comma y, right? That is fine, you up do the Fourier transform operator. But instead of doing the two dimensional Fourier transform, you can also do two one dimensional Fourier transform meaning you can take the Fourier transform along the x direction and then cascade it with do Fourier transform again on the y direction. So, you can accomplish the two dimensions, you can separate the two dimension as, as two one dimension that is what we mean by separability and this again will be used uh, just for simplicity. Right? Instead of accomplishing two dimensions, you can do it as two one dimensional operators. So, you can separate the two dimensional Fourier transform into two one dimensional Fourier transforms. Okay, this is what I was waiting to get after. Transfer function. All the other properties are fine, but this is a very important one. Why is this important one? The name is same transfer function. You would have heard. Why, what did we what do you mean by transfer function from your previous prerequisites. Oh, that means it is transferring, this transfer function transfers something from input to the output. This is what we talked about system also, the system H transfers the input or you know uh, 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 operates on the input to get the output. Here it is just a, a Fourier transform. So, you can say transfer function, it transfers something from input to output. What is that? It is transferring it is transferring the frequency content, right? So, essentially transfer function is an important concept. We saw the system impulse 
right a function for a, a response in the spatial domain. So, if you are going to do spatial domain analysis of the system right you do all that you can use the impulse response. Whereas, if I want to do the analysis in the equivalent domain of the frequency then I need something to analyze it I need to be able to characterize the system in that domain right. So, the h we were able to characterize in the spatial domain if I know my if I present the impulse response the systems output is considered as the system impulse response or system point spread function specifically for the two dimensions right. So, that can be used to analyze the system in spatial domain. So, if I want to do that in the frequency domain then we need to characterize the system in the frequency domain. So, how do we do that? Think about how did how we did in the in the spatial domain same equivalent we should do there what did we we presented the sig we presented the system right with a impulse right a, a, a impulse we presented it and whatever came out we said oh that is how it responds to that impulse and therefore, any arbitrary signal can be viewed as collection of shifted impulse with that function and therefore, we used all the linear uh, uh, spatial invariation LSI right shift invariance that is what we did. So, here likewise how do I decompose the signal there we were able to do f of x comma y was we used the uh, impulse shift and we got different locations we how did we do here oh when we talked about frequency response we talked about there should be a, a basis there should be a frequency that we should apply right. So, if I now give a system into the system instead of an impulse right I need a impulse in the frequency domain what will be an impulse in the frequency domain a sinusoid a particular frequency or a cosinusoid a particular frequency right any oscillations with one particular frequency will have frequency representation will have only one point it will be existent only at that frequency right. So, if I present the system right if I present the system with a typical sin, uh, sinusoid or cosine. So, we will write it as a complex exponential right. So, if I hit the system with a complex exponential right we were calling this as f of x comma y f of right remember and h of and then your double integral we got the output that is how we wrote when we talked about uh, spatial impulse that time we call the signal as f of x comma y to be generic that input signal is now complex exponential why do we pick complex exponential oh because we know this is sinusoid or cosinusoid with some frequency specific frequency u and v. So, so this is our um, just substitution right we put this. So, from now we need to do some simplification to understand what this can be viewed as ok. Quickly looking at this nothing is obvious just we can recognize that oh we have we did not do anything fancy so far instead of what we used to do f of x comma y we have replaced that f of x comma y the input signal with complex exponential that is all we have done and this is your system impulse response right. So, this is your system so input system this is your output so nothing fancy. So, now what we will do is it is we will do some maneuvering and I will show the result here, but you what you can start to think is ok we can do some change of variables right. I can look at this and say look x minus epsilon I have a epsilon here right. So, maybe I can do a change of variable. So, I can do u of u of this epsilon I can write it as here just do uh, variable substitution. So, the idea would be I can break this exponential right here right if I break these two epsilon eta x minus epsilon y minus eta. So, I will do change of variables so that this whatever you have subtraction here will go there 
why is that important for us oh if exponential if you have four variables plus minus you can basically it's easy to split right exponential dot exponential you will have you can split it multiple exponentials that's the logic so we'll just do some change of variables i would let you to uh, work here do the change of variable and you'll quickly realize it's just one step wonder if you do the change of variables and rewrite right you can get to this form of g of x comma y as h of u comma v times e power e of j 2 pi into u x plus v y what is this h of u comma v h of u comma v is nothing the fourier transform of h of this guy okay so this is not that so you can actually look at it how we you know one step uh, in between that i missed you should be able to eyeball and uh, convince yourself that yes so if i have this i can change this to epsilon and eta i'm just going to uh, use the same variables just a uh, dummy variables right so i will change this to epsilon and eta so that's how you get this and this will happen x minus epsilon and x y uh, y minus eta right so then i can obviously group x and y right together and eta and uh, epsilon together okay so there should be a negative uh here right if you do that x minus eta so there will be a, a, a negative here so if you do that you can quickly recognize this term times this term in this double integral form you can recognize it as h of u comma v of course the variables are only eta and epsilon so you will have here 2 pi u x v y right that will just come out because that's not the running variable here okay so just substitute substitute variable and you will quickly be able to group the terms or at least look at the grouping and identify that the double integral of h of epsilon eta right e power minus j 2 pi this guy is nothing but the fourier transform of h what is h system function so essentially h capital h of u comma v is the frequency response of your uh, impulse function or your you know system function which we call as the transfer function why is that because it is transferring the frequency content from input to output okay so i would let you do this one step in between and convince that you are able to get the frequency response or or the you can spot the h of u comma v okay so uh, of course there are several important properties but uh, like i said this is only for quick review that we are interested in so one of the other important property is we talked about circular symmetry right we 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 talked about this f theta of x comma y is nothing but if you have f of x comma y and you have f theta of x comma y is the same f of x comma y that is rotated right so if this is the case f theta of x comma y is equal to f of x comma y that means it's circularly symmetric no matter which angle you look at the function looks same so whatever you have f of x comma y it doesn't matter which angle you are looking at right then it is circularly symmetric whether you look at it at 90 degrees 0 degrees it doesn't matter right the f of x y is same so it is f theta of x comma y if it is same so any same as your f of x comma y at for any theta so that is your spatial domain signal 
if that is the spatial domain signal which is called as circularly symmetric then our interest is in the fourier transform how does the fourier transform of such a signal look right how will it look oh that will also be circularly symmetric about the origin i mean uh, roughly just so that you get comfortable you are able to position the concept in two dim when we do 1d right if you have a gaussian shaped time domain signal what will be your uh, frequency uh, spectra the shape of the frequency spectra that will also be gaussian right that's something that you know so similarly here if my spatial domain is circularly symmetric because we have one more dimension circularly symmetric so imagine you have a bell right you have a bell that means your frequency response right that is also going to look like a bell that's what this physic i mean this, how, that's how you intuitively get a feel for what the circularly symmetric means that much is straight forward not a big deal but then uh, but then uh, we'll have to uh, look at little more detail as to how do we compute this two dimensional fourier transform so if i have f of x comma y as circularly symmetric that is f theta of x comma y that is the input signal special case where the input signal is circularly symmetric it turns out the fourier transform is also circularly symmetric so we can write instead of two dimensions if such a case instead of two dimensions right r comma theta if theta is same i irrespective of theta the signal is same then we can reduce the two dimensions into one dimension so you can essentially try to write f of x comma y as f of r only a function of radius right r is equal to square root of x because it's theta it's circularly symmetric it doesn't matter okay so if this is so we said if this is the case the fourier transform is also symmetric circularly symmetric therefore we should have a equivalent there so your f of u comma v is also going to be symmetric and therefore there also we could write it in terms of only one parameter which is your radius parameter in the frequency domain so you can get your small q as square root of u square plus u u and v are your spatial frequencies right u comma v your spectra axes are u and v uh, horizontal uh, fluctuations in the x direction and uh, frequency in the y direction so much is good it's straight forward right okay i see the benefit of having a circularly symmetric case because if the signal is circularly symmetric the fourier transform is also circularly symmetric if it is circularly symmetric the two dimensional va two variables i can reduce it to one variable and therefore i can get one dimensional f of f f of r is one dimensional f of q is one dimensional but pretty much what is not said here what is not taken for granted what you shouldn't get confused we have not really related f of r and capital f of q we know the two dimensions are related right the two dimensions of f of x comma y and f capital f of u comma v are related by fourier transform but what about when you reduce the variable because it is circularly symmetric you get f of r one dimension capital f of q one dimension is there a relationship between these two right of course it is there mathematically there is a, but it is not what you think it's not same f of q is not fourier transform of f of r okay instead f of q is you have 2 pi 0 to infinity of f of r remember in fourier transform we had complex exponentials right the signal was multiplied with e power minus j but here what do you see the variable this is dr but what do you see j not 2 pi with an argument of 2 pi qr so this is nothing but a zero to order uh, bessel function of first kind okay what is so so this is a, a, a unique function so we can uh arrive at that by considering your bessel function of the uh, nth order of first kind is having this relationship right so if this is the bessel function 
uh, then what do we want or oh, we want zeroth order so if this is for n then we can substitute zero right we could get j not of r is equal to 0 to pi of cos of r sin phi d phi okay so this is called as your hankel transform that relates your in a circularly symmetric case right of if the signal is circularly symmetric the hankel transform relates the uh, spatial domain and the frequency domain the one dimensional right uh, equivalent is related to what is called as hankel transform why is this important i mean if you want to calculate the two dimensional uh, frequency response you could calculate it through in in this case of circularly symmetric then you could actually calculate the hankel transform and then arrive at your 2d fourier transform okay so this is forward hankel transform this is going to be your inverse hankel transform okay so i think this probably is more for most of you these two this hankel transform and the relationship with circular symmetry might be new first time but it's very intuitive you don't of course it th this might seem little scary but if you really look at it this is not circularly symmetric right is this a weird condition no actually if you look at it a patient this is the system right the imaging system the patient goes in right no matter how you orient yourself the output should also come out correctly my head if i go in particular direction i get the head if i go in another direction that should also be rotated so circularly so most of the time if that is rotation invariance is expected which is what will happen then your system response right your system function your psf or point spread function or your impulse uh, uh, point impulse response to that that will be circularly symmetric as well so this is something that you will encounter okay i think this is a good point to stop our review of signals and systems from the next lecture we will jump into some basic uh, concepts behind how do we uh, talk about quantify understand and what do we mean by image quality because at the end of this we are going to use all these measures metrics to communicate what a image quality is and how do we characterize the image by its image quality and how do we relate the parameters from physics from the instrumentation from the image signal processing how does it affect the end image quality okay so for now let's stop here i'll see you next time in the uh, review of image quality parameters thank you